or the following state. I was just telling the people on the live audio feed, guys, we have Bond Archive Sunday Service premiere on at 4 p.m. Pacific on uh, Bond Rebuilding the Man YouTube channel. Different from JLP, different from the Fallen State. What's up, everybody? It's Wednesday, May 11th, 2022 AD, Anno Domini. That's the year of our Lord. And uh, it's 9.01 a.m. U.S. Pacific Daylight Time. That's right. You know it. And I will be getting to your calls. Some of you already on hold. We're going to have a fun Wednesday show. Hopefully not too loosey-goosey. Because there's some interesting things to talk about. Elon Musk was asked by what? Financial Times or something like that? Something like that? I don't know. If he would reverse Trump's permanent suspension on Twitter. If he... If his deal goes through to buy Twitter, there's a dumb attack on Trump. And you know how there's all this talk about the pro-abortion evil people protesting outside of people's homes? Well, I protested outside some lady so-called politician's home, too. Did you know that? A couple years ago? During the scam-demic shutdowns. I want to cover also Amber Heard's phoniness. And the phoniness about uh, so-called gun homicides and other and other stuff, right? But anyway, guys, let's get right on with the show. One, two, three, four. Oh, it's the Hank Report. The Hank Report. La la la. you guys doing? I am fine. What kind of horrible music do we have on the docket today, Hake? We have more lust control coming right up in about an hour. Nice. Gonna play two songs in a row again. Hope you enjoy it. By the way, uh, press one, my uh, Odyssey viewers and listeners. If the audio is working, press two if it's not working. One, if you can hear me good. Two, if you can not hear me. <laughs> Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? <laughs> um, I am wearing a Bond t-shirt. Bond Rebuilding the Man Teespring t-shirt. It says, Rebuilding the Family by Rebuilding the Man. You can get yours by going to rebuildingtheman.com slash stores. I support Bond and you should too. Well, thank you guys. Many of you do already. That's cool. And... It is Wednesday, guys. That means a Bond Archive Sunday service premiere. You know, the church throwback services, they're always good. And uh, church current services are, too. I help make sure that those go out on the internet. And, uh, so, um, you know what? Let me first get right to a call or two, guys. Let me get to Kathy in California. Wants to talk about the Straight Pride Parade. Kathy, how are you doing? Hi, James. Hey. Just, uh, thank you for taking my call. You're welcome. I'm thank great. You for calling. I'm well. Very well. Nice. Kathy, C-A-T-H-Y. Okay. Is that how it's spelled? Just out of curiosity. Uh, yeah. Okay, nice. Go okay, ahead. Okay, so I met, I met you guys at, in Modesto at the... Um, uh, pro-life rally. It was great. I had a great time. Nice. It was so nice. Um, and it's because of you and Jesse that I met Don um, J. Grunsman. Right on. now running for California State Senator. Okay. And, Don um, Grunsman. So, the founder yes. of the Straight Pride Parade running for California yes. State Senator. That's cool. Exactly. So um, all your California um, everyone from California who listens to your show hopefully they will um, hear this and um, take him under consideration. 
Yeah. Don Grundman. He, uh, he's the one yep. who, he really likes J JLP. He's the one who invited J.C. Lee, uh, to come nice. be, the, like, the, uh, guy who, one of the guys who speaks, one of the main guys who speaks to the crowd. That's cool. Right. And may I give a shout-out to my sister, Chris, in Arizona, and Cassandra, her daughter, my uh, niece? Yeah. Definitely. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> shout-out to Chris in Arizona and Cass, Cassandra. Nice. Yeah, she's the reason why I know who Sheriff Joe Arpaio is, because, of course, um, you know, uh, she's pro-life. Yeah. And she calls you, your show regarding that. Um, and it's just nice that his mother actually sacrificed her life to save his. Wow. If you read his book, um, he says that in the book, uh, she refused to get have an abortion. That's And cool. I think that's what women should do today. Think yeah. about, um, you know, that's the ultimate sacrifice. To give up your child, your life for the life of your child. Yeah, um, in the old days, that pretty commonly happened. So, yes, that, well, that's what was their mindset in the old days too. They were willing to do that. Yeah, a child is a blessing from God. Yep. Man, that's cool. I did not know that story. I'm still reading his book. I'm a s very slow reader. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? The book on Audible is very good, too. Very well done. Okay, nice. Right on. So so I would suggest you um, check the, out the Audible. Okay. Appreciate the tip. It's great to hear and from I'd you, like, Kathy. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'd like to give another shout-out to Will. I, I, call, I consider him my homeboy, William, from California. Okay. He lives here in San Francisco, and um, he calls your show a lot, so I just wanted to let him know that maybe um, he might decide to vote for Don, too. Don Day Grunman. Right on. That would be about cool. Saving, he's about saving our freedoms and our children. Right. You know, save the children. Yeah, that's right, because our straight pride protests are also outside of the Planned Parenthood. Because Planned Parenthood is, not only do they support killing babies, they support the LGBT mess. And so yep. we, pr we protest outside of Planned Parenthood in Modesto, California, it's an annual thing now, every August, late in August. And, uh, yes, and I plan to see you there again, or I hope that you're going to be there. Yeah, I hope so, too. Um, and keep your eyes peeled, keep your wits about you, because, you know, the police kind of... It seems like the police are directed to let Antifa try to pick fights and then try to get... So that they have an excuse to break up the rallies, but they kind of let violence happen. So, well, always nice be to have wary. the Proud Boys there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Proud Boys. Thank God for the Proud Boys. Am I right? Whew. Thank God for the Proud Boys. I agree. Yeah. Well, thank you, Kathy. It's great to hear from you. Call me again sometime. I shall. Thank you for taking my call and have a great day. You as well. That's cool. And shout out, yes, to Chris in AZ and Cassandra over there in uh, Arizona. We are, they are in Mountain Standard Time, which is the same currently as Pacific Daylight Time. 9.09 a.m. Nice. Speaking of uh, William in California, she shouted him out. William in California, how are you doing? Hey, good morning, man. How are you doing? Doing fine. Thank you. Good. Uh, just a, something to look at without offending anybody, uh, women, blacks and all and gay people, it seems that nobody can talk about you and point out what you're doing wrong. Because these two young men that called in Jesse's show, Nick and the one with the girlfriend, first of all, Nick, there's something that you don't know. There's really no such thing as racism, and slavery was a business. Let's get that straight. Yeah, it's true. Okay. All right. I don't want to get too hung up on carrying. I don't want to get into these the callers. Is, I don't want to attack yeah, the anybody. Callers, I just want to say people this. May not I just have, want to say this. People may not have yeah, heard they, Jesse's show, and they're and then they're lost. Yeah, that's as true. What you're talking okay. About. Well, long story short, a lot of times, without pointing to him personally, a lot of blacks uh, point to other people, mainly whites, that you had a head start and you were privileged and all of that stuff. Nobody is privileged. A lot of this stuff is jealousy because some blacks 
actually have what you call that privilege. It's not privilege. It's called generational wealth. You work hard, and then your parents have something, they give it to you, and it makes, and it, makes it look like you got more than them, which you do. But it's called generational wealth, and a lot of the uh, accusations about racism is really just jealousy, because they'll see somebody black that's like that and taking care of his business. They can stand on his own and not follow groups. They'll yeah. look at him and call him Sam Bowen and Uncle Tom and all that stuff. Well, it's really jealousy. And it, the teachers that taught Nick got him in bad condition. All yeah. right, man. I appreciate so it, William. It, yeah, so I mean, it's just something to take a look at. A lot of this racism stuff is really just jealousy because white people, more of them have generational wealth. You can't it's not it's not that. even honestly generational wealth because my fam- my parents didn't have generational well, wealth. I they, they made understand. money by working and then their their mm-hmm. kids are a little better off. But right. a lot of right. a lot of the whites weren't generationally wealthy. No, but no, you uh, you called in about right. protesters outside of Pelosi's house. Uh yeah, my nephew called this morning and said they're over in uh, Pacific Heights over at uh, on Arguello over at the uh, at uh, Pelosi Mansion. Wow. And um Who is uh, who like, is that? Who who are the protesting Nancy, outside of Nancy Pelosi's house and it's like, you know, probably about 6 blocks away from my property and it's like I asked him I say, "Well, is everything okay over there?" Who's I mean, protesting I'm, is it? Did you say? Uh liberals and the, the abortion thing and all of this stuff. Oh, okay. They, so they're attacking Nancy now over on Aguello Street. Nervous her, Nancy. Why are they yeah. attacking Nervous Nancy Pelosi? She's on their oh, side. Po- I know. I didn't understand <laughs> that. It's kind of weird. Was that co- did but, JLP cover that already? I thought I read that in the JLP. I, he, I think he did. I think he did. Wow. You know, with this HHS secretary, Xavier, what's that? Becerra. Becerra. Yeah, Javier. Yeah. Xavier or Javier Becerra. He's a you California know. guy. He was... He was a Gender California Secretary of State. And, Yikes. Yeah. Uh, so they're protesting Frank. outside her house because they're even, they want her to be even more extreme, huh? Well, uh, they're doing everything I want them to do. They right. lost. It's over. Like I told you Well, yesterday. it's not over. You, what's the, over? You're talking about abortion? Well, a lot of it's over with because they took that mess off the uh, military's bookshelf that oh. woke crap and, and a, a lot of their stuff is failing because of their behavior I'm doing everything we need them to do true so, you know yeah, yeah the so blind maybe, people maybe maybe black people can be talked about and stop looking at white people and what they have and what they do when they say something about you address it look at it if it's your kid don't just say not my kid say hmm maybe i should take a look at that yeah not to offend anybody you know, but uh, a lot of these kids are taught by women in school all their life. They probably had zero male teachers. Right. I know. What a shame. Some, some of my some of my best teachers were males. I know. Mr. Miller. Oh. I had a Mr. Miller over in uh, fourth grade. He benched me once because I put a big thorn on fourth the grade. <laughs> on the I seat of a girl. Sixth grade, Mr. Hawkins. He was a World War II veteran. Uh, older black guy from Alabama. He's a great teacher. Yeah, great. I had some good high school you know. male teachers. Mm-hmm. English mm-hmm. teacher. One mm-hmm. of the English teach- male teachers was kind of weak, but the other the others were solid. World history and geography. I had Mr. Welch. Exactly. That's cool. It was great. You know, and yep. they took a lot of the stuff out of schools, like shop and metal shop and oh, yeah. auto shop. They, they've taken it out. You know, and and these young men can't even change a tire. Right. You know, so maybe they should just start looking at other people and look at yourselves. That's 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 what you need to do. You know, somebody calls you out and say it is seventy percent seventy percent crime in this country are blacks, just take a look at it. Don't get offended. Right. Not to attack anybody and please don't attack me, but it is the truth. Very true. Well, mm-hmm. Kathy from California shouted you out, William. And uh, well, thank you, Kathy. Yeah, it's a nice Shout call from to her. you and all of the reasonable people in the chat. Everybody, I wish everybody luck, but you know, maybe we need to look at ourselves. Look in the mirror. I look in the mirror every morning when I, when I get up and brush my teeth and wash <laughs> my face. I see me right on.
and I make mistakes every day, and you got to correct them. You know. Stand yeah, up. true. So, do you, up, men. you be should men. call into JLP's show with the with your answer to his biblical question, which is along those lines: Do you correct yourself? You should call into his show yeah. with that. Yeah, because we make mistakes every day. Nice, but you know, stop with this. You can't talk about blacks and women, huh? I know why. It's ridiculous. Who are you? Well, I gotta gotta keep moving, William. I appreciate you. Take care, man. I appreciate you. Take care. Thank you, Kathy. All right. Um, quick super chat. Oh, it's not even a super chat. Quick smart chat from Free Ross. I say it's smart. He states generational wealth is not only money or property. It's also knowledge, culture, morals, etc. Whatever your parents can give you. Good point. That's fair enough. Moral wealth or uh, reputational wealth. You have most whites establishing a good reputation or at least a decent reputation of being nice, well-behaved, polite, uh, responsible, reliable, somewhat fairly honest, not going to steal from you. Um, Much, 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 much less likely to steal or assault, steal from or assault you or cry racism. If you, they, if you disagree with them, that's a form of, I guess, white so-called generational wealth. <laughs> but it's also being used by the commies so, and the commie useful idiots. So I like to stray away from that word. But, but fair point. I do say, oh, that's, we have white privilege. We have the privilege of having established our forefathers and our peers having established a decent reputation of being just decent people. High trust society. I guess you could call that a, a privilege. But anyway, thank you, Free Ross. Very nice. And another super chat from Lin Yen Shin who says, Oh man. As heard in the short clip of my morning commute, seems God only granted me three fifths of a speech box, but that's okay. Satan gave me this full keyboard, <laughs> says Lin Yen Shin. He also goes on to say, that clip I mentioned is posted in the comment section under your last Facebook upload. Facebook.com slash the Hake Report slash videos. Not from today, but presumably from, I guess, maybe yesterday, the 10th, female cops versus neighbors. <laughs> female cops and neighbors. Both problems. And maybe he put it there. Uh, thank you, Lin Yen Chin. Do, 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 do. Goodness, there's like over a hundred chats. Shout out to the Facebook crew, the faithful few, the few, the proud. Is it under this one or is it under my last Facebook post, which would have been under my, um, what would my Facebook post, my last Facebook post have been? The audio podcast announcement? Maybe so. Which is different from, let me see. Well, I'll, I'll have to look for that. I don't want to waste too much time on air hunting that down. But thank you for the tip, Lin Yen Chin. Appreciate it. And thank you, Super Chatters. Very kind. Um, before I get back to calls, hang tight, callers. I will get to you. You can call in 888-775-3773. But this is kind of a long clip, guys. I want to share with you Elon Musk talking like he has some sense. Uh, here is clip 12, shared by based Benny Johnson of, um, of uh, not AFPAC, <laughs> the other one. But anyway, he's, he, tweet, he shared this on Twitter. He's a blue check mark on Twitter. Breaking, Elon Musk says he would reverse Trump's suspension from Twitter, and he called the ban, which took place on January 6th, 2021. No, maybe it was like January 10th. Something along those lines. He called the ban morally wrong and flat out stupid. That's Elon Musk, the owner of Tesla and SpaceX. He's a based South African. I'm kidding around about based. I don't know. Who is seeking to purchase Twitter. We'll see if it goes through. And he was interviewed apparently by FT Live. FT, I think, stands for Financial Times. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. 
but apparently he's being interviewed by some liberal foreigner who has his facts all wrong or he's cherry picking irrelevant facts when referencing the January 6th mostly peaceful capital protest Patriots Day. Anyway, this is almost four minutes long. Enjoy Elon Musk versus some liberal foreigner. I call him a foreigner because, well, he has an accent and he's not, I don't even think he's white. Here is, uh, here it is. Listen to this. Are you planning to let Donald Trump back on? Well, I, I think there's, there's a general question of should was it Twitter have permanent bans? Um, and, you know, I've, I've talked with Jack Dorsey about this, and uh, he and I are of the same mind, which is that uh, permanent bans should be uh, extremely rare and really reserved for uh, people where they're trying to, uh, for, for accounts that are uh, bots or uh, spam scam accounts. Uh, where there's just no legitimacy to the account at all. Um, I, I do think that uh, uh, it was not correct to ban Donald Trump. I think that was, that was a mistake um, because it, uh, it alienated a large part of the country and did not ultimately result in Donald Trump not having a voice. He is now going to be on Truth Social, um, as will uh, a large part of the sort of the, the right in the in the United States. Um, and so I think this could end up being frankly worse than having a sing, you know, a single forum where everyone can debate. Um, so um, I guess the answer is that I, 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 I would reverse the PERMA ban. I will say I'm not, I don't own Twitter yet. So this is not like a thing that will definitely happen because what if I don't own Twitter? Um, but my opinion and Jack Dorsey, I want to be clear, shares this opinion. Uh, is that we should not have perma, perma bans. Um, now, now that doesn't mean that somebody gets to say whatever they want to say. If they say something that is um, illegal or um, otherwise, you know, uh, just you know, just destructive to the world, then then that there should be perhaps a timeout, uh, a temporary suspension, or, or that particular tweet uh, should be uh, uh, made invisible or or have very limited uh, traction. Um, but I think perma bans just fundamentally undermine trust in Twitter as a, a, a town square uh, where um, everyone can uh, voice their opinion. That's right. It was I a fun, I, th I think it was a morally bad decision, to be clear. Yep. And, and foolish in the extreme. Even, even after he egged on the crowd who went to the US Capitol, some of them carrying nooses, you still think it was a mistake to remove him? I think the, if, if there are tweets that are wrong, they should, and bad, those should be uh, uh, either deleted or made invisible. Um, and a suspension, uh, a temporary suspension is appropriate, um, but not a permanent ban. So if the deal completes, he might potentially come back on, but with the understanding that if he does something similar again, he'll be back in the sin bin. Similar again. Uh, he has publicly stated that he will not be coming back to Twitter um, and that he will only be on Truth Social. And this is the, the point that I'm trying to make, which is perhaps not getting across, is that, there, is that banning Trump from Twitter didn't end Trump's voice. It will amplify it among the right. And this is why it is morally wrong and flat out stupid. I agree, man. Uh, Ivana Spencer's laughing. Laughing a lot. Lots of laughs about the nooses. Oh, he egged on the protesters at the Capitol. Give me a break. He said, we want peace. We have to have peace. I know they stole bleep all it. I have to bleep out the word stole because we all know that the election was on the up and up. Winky face. But, um, it's so fake. 
CJ Connor over there on the YouTube chat. Former JLP guest, multiple time JLP guest, Reverend Chris Connor states Mayor Lightfoot, Lori Lightfoot, the lesbian, the black lesbian, issued a call to arms. Should we make a big deal out of it the way that Democrat Democrats do? Or should we acknowledge it's political hyperbole, not a call to war? Treat her the way, treat her, or treat her the way Democrats do. Fresh Prince says he should come back. What's up, Fresh Prince? Did you know that Fresh Prince is in the chat? Uh, the old Fresh Prince, not so fresh anymore, is he? <laughs> One woman away from total destruction. I chuckle because that's just, this is just a side note. Um, I'm referring to Will Smith, the actor. Who, pr- who played uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. I th- what did he play, Will Smith in Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? <laughs> uh, but he's not so fresh anymore. He's not so bright-eyed and bushy-tailed because he's married to Jada Pinkett. He married Jada Pinkett, who turned into Jada Pinkett Smith, kept her, her last name as her middle name. Crazy, psycho, feminist, evil woman. Degenerate, perverted. According to her, her grandma was too and taught her to be the same. And, uh, terrible. One woman away from total destruction. I read that in the chat. Somebody said, Hake is one woman away from total destruction. (laughs) Uh, Isn't that so true of, of, like, so many men, males? They're all tough until they get a girlfriend or a wife. Then they turn all soft. The truth comes out. The weakness is brought forth. Terrible. But, um, yeah, poor, poor Will Smith. Yeah, um, yeah, that's true, Esoteric. That, you were tweeting, uh, with, uh, with, uh, C.J. Connor. True. Um, yeah, they were talking about Trump didn't shrink the government. Esoteric. Or was talking about Trump not tw- not shrinking the government because C.J. Connor said that he shared a headline from um, this is one of my chat people uh, people in the chat former guest of JLP he tweeted that uh, an article from the Epic Times that said that Trump was um, when he said that the the FBI or the you know Obama administration spied on him I think this is the situation. I think it was at that point. There was a panic at the FBI when Trump tweeted that. He exposed them as having spied on him. Spied on his, uh, his campaign. And wiretapped Trump Tower, right? Quote, unquote. Um, he said the FBI should be disbanded. And Esoteric was like, Trump didn't shrink the government. He did, de- he did uh, reduce... Regulations, but he did pay a lot to build up the military, which was a good thing. Uh, there were a lot of things, a lot of missed opportunities, people say. But I still totally appreciate Trump. Some say that uh, he's not a what you see is what you get guy. Some say that. I don't know. But anyway. <laughs> I agree, Elon Musk. It was wrong and stupid to, uh, although Elon Musk, I don't know how much I trust him either, but he's correct on this. He didn't say it. He didn't say or tweet anything wrong. It's so dumb. Am I right? I'm right. Um, here's another quick headline, guys. Um, Drudge reported Holder said that Trump should be indicted. This was last week. Eric Holder Or maybe it was on Sunday. Eric Holder, the Obama AG, black attorney general under Obama. And he was like deputy attorney general under Bill Clinton. Just a disgusting person. Openly said we should brainwash people against guns. So he hates America. He hates white people. He hates our Second Amendment. He hates our First Amendment. Said Trump should be indicted. See, there's your your hatred of the First Amendment. He has to be held accountable. It's sort of a reversal of his previous stance, maybe because he thought that Trump was gone. But Trump is not gone. He's still pulling crowds. People say Trump was part of the agenda. 
<clears throat> Some say that. But, you know, Merrick Garland is the current AG. Also not a Christian. Eric Holder, probably not Christian. Certainly doesn't act that way. Certainly doesn't act that way. But I'm, I'm with Trump. Because it seems like Trump is with the people. Although he's, always, he's also with the people who are just uh, uh, advertisers. Yikes. That part, not so hot on. Um, and that former defense secretary, what, what was he? Was he Trump's defense secretary, Mark, e- Mark Esper? He tweeted, I mean, he, he went on, because he came out with this book. He came out with this book, and so he's being interviewed by 60 Minutes. Talking all this mess. And so Trump responded to him. I will have you know. Trump responded to him. Uh, here's, here he is. Here's his response to Mark Esper. Talking trash. Mark Esp- Esper, who's supposedly a Republican, right? Trump supports LGBTQ. I'm not with him at all. But we knew going into that that he did that. It's not like he switched. And he's not like the uh, subversive supporting LGBTQ. He's pulling them out of the military. He's going the, the right direction, even though he's ni- nicer to them than I would be. Anyway, here's his... Uh, here's this... Uh, thing, responding to Mark Esper, this backstabbing so-called defense secretary. Uh, During a June 1st, 2020 meeting at the White House, the cabinet was debating what to do about protests and civil unrest. Mark Esper says President Trump wanted to shoot some of the protesters in the legs. A lot of foul language was used and accused President Trump of calling members of the cabinet blanking losers. Trump says this is a complete lie and 10 witnesses can back it up. Mark Espert was weak and totally ineffective. And because of it, I had to run the military. (laughs) Wow. I took out ISIS. Qasem Soleimani. That's the Iranian general who was behind the roadside bombs of Americans. Allegedly, according to reports. Al-Baghdadi. That's the head of ISIS. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. Rebuilt the military, Trump says, with $2.5 trillion. Created Space Force and so much more. Mark Esper was a stiff who was desperate not to lose his job. He would do anything I wanted. That's why I called him Yesper instead of Esper. Yesper. (laughs) He was a lightweight and figurehead, and I realized it very early on. He was recommended to me by some very weak rhinos, and that is what he turned out to be. Wow. Trump going in on Esper. The guy that he appointed... With the advice of, you know, because he had to work with the rhinos. Not to give him excuses too much, but I don't know. Trump wanted to send, this is another claim. Trump wanted to send 10,000 active duty troops into Washington, D.C. after St. John's Church was set on fire by Antifa, Black Lives Matter, during the actual insurrection in uh, summer of 2020. He says, wrong. Trump says, wrong. I wanted to send in at least 10,000 troops for January 6th, 2021, not the 2020 protest, because I knew many people were coming to Washington, D.C. that day to protest the, what he calls the corrupt presidential election of 2020. I disavow. (laughs) Uh, Nancy Pelosi and the D.C. mayor turned me down, says Trump. Uh, The reports say, oh, no official request was made. Uh, See... 60 Minutes should ask them why they chose not to have the proper security, which would have totally changed the day and allowed us to have a proper debate on the evidence of massive election. I call it shenanigans, he says. The F word for fraud, which the fake news media still refuses to cover, to cover whatsoever. That's Trump responding to them. And other things. Oh, just, uh, <laughs> on a couple of occasions, well, here's one more. On a couple of occasions, here's another allegation. Trump, President Trump suggested to Esper they attack the drug cartels with missiles. And Trump put no comment. <laughs> uh, nice. An independent thinker, I would call Trump. 
wouldn't you call him an independent thinker, even the ones who think that he was a... In some ways, he was definitely expressed in some independent thinking, I think. Certainly not your run-of-the-mill uh, phony politician. There's no one better than him in the, uh, in the public eye who has shown his face that I can tell. Put it that way. Does that make sense? I'm talking about as far as the politicians go. Trump was the best president in my lifetime, says Fresh Prince. Agreed, man. Agreed. Misty asks, WWAD, what would Asmodor do? <laughs> I think he would vote for Trump. Not sure. Anyway, thank you guys bearing with me through that little s- couple of Trump stories, Trump-related stories. Um, here's a call or two, guys. Let me get to Keith in Illinois. It's on the line. Keith, how are you doing? All right, Hank. How are you? Fine, thank you. Yeah, I just called. I want to know what people thought about the fact that, you know, that, that to me, too many um, conservatives stand down too, too, too much. Um, you know, the demon rats, a.k.a. Uh, Democrats. Nice. Uh, you know, very violent, very hostile. And that's the only way, you know, they're like bullies. Once you hit a bully back, you ever notice that a bully stopped bullying you? Have you ever noticed that? Well, if you let them... Yeah, they, they never stop. That's true. So when you hit a bully back, don't they stop bullying you? Right. As that well, how, liberal... long, how long do we have to stand down? I mean, I hear Jesse talking. You know, Jesse, you know I mean? I, I really, you know, like him a lot. But he, I mean, you know, nobody agrees with everybody 100%. But I'm like, you know, we need to protest at uh, 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 Nancy Pelosi. We need to protest at, uh, at all their people, how the two show up aggressively, get in their face, Elizabeth Warren, because they're all scary. They all scared. They all back down and cut their tail so fast. But the more you just hang back and wait on them to get morally right, you're just wasting your time. Yeah. So I just want people to call in and, you know, just kind of uh, see what they think about that. Because I know, I mean, I, I know people used to bully me. Once I, you know, hit them and threw them down on the ground, you know, got, you know, started pumping iron and got big. Guess what? They left me alone. But if I didn't do anything, then they would try to intimidate my, me in my whole life. But I just wonder, like, when did you stand up? That's what a man is supposed to do. A man, you don't bring a you don't bring a knife to a gunfight. You bring a bigger gun to a gunfight. Or, but if you're in striking you're distance, do, a knife beats gun. Bring, you're supposed to bring a semi or automatic rifle, automatic weapon to a gunfight, not another. You don't you know you, you don't bring a revolver when somebody brings you know bring a, a, a semi automatic. You bring a automatic weapon to a fight. You know what I'm saying? It's just like. Conservatives, I mean, it's like, when, when are they going to stand up and act like real men, you know? You know, you got to become a warrior. You have to fight to win, not just, oh, I just, I'm not sure I'm going to be morally right. I'm going to be passive. I'm going to give them a speech and try to hope. You know, I ain't never seen Satan, you know, change his mind because you brought God to his attention. I've never seen, I've seen, you know, evil people get worse because you are not fighting back. So that's, that's kind of like, when is this going to change going to happen? Yeah. So you're saying that people should be protesting outside of uh, politicians' homes? Yes. And uh, judges' to, homes? And we should be more aggressive, more louder, more loud speakers, more, more aggressive, more angry. You know, you heard what Elizabeth Warren said, get in their face. You got to get in, you know, in, 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 in the judge's face. Well, why are we in, in their face? Why are we yelling at them to the top of our voice with big bull horns and, and banging drums outside of Because they're cowards. They will back down. They will literally stop this aggression toward you know, conservatives and Republicans, if we come at them harder than they come at us, they will stop. I know these people, they count. Well, we do have to be... You don't see the liberals, liberals, they're a bunch of old, ugly women, they they weak and fat, and these old 55 men that be with them old weak, pathetic, liberal beta males be with them, they only yell at police officers because the police officers ain't busting their heads upside their head with batons. You have to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves, though. You can't just be, oh, uh... Oh, they get to riot, so we should riot too. You can't be foolish about it. You have to stay right, because otherwise they're gonna, they have the, they have the so-called law on their side, and there have been right-wingers who've tried to fight like men, and they get the clamp down on them hard. 
So you have to be wise about it. You're right. I I do agree with that. Led by God. You can at least least bang the drum in front of their house. I mean, you know, they don't get physical (laughs) with you. I'm not saying get physical with them. I'm saying come up in the same way that they come, you know, you know, protest to, you know what I'm saying, bang drums. That's all I'm saying. And when they decide to get physical, you get physical. And I don't care. So how long do you have to stand down and wait for them to destroy the country, destroy the world, waiting on them to say every time, you know, we, we defend ourselves, you know, they, 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 the law is on their side. I mean, how long, well, when is that going to end? Right. You know, so I'm, I'm just trying to put that to question because, you know, I'm just wondering because I'm 63 and I'm like, every time I know a bully, you don't do nothing back. They will make your life a living hell till you die. So I'm like, oh, when you swing on a bully back and try to, try to hit, hit him in the head with a baseball bat, he guess what he do? He stops he, and he respects you. And I'm looking at you, know what I mean? I understand what you're saying. And I'm not saying don't, don't, don't come physical until they come physical, but you have to post, you know, you have to make them back down at least with the same, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, antics of protest. That's all I'm we saying. We do need to get tough. That's true. That's, that's the word. That's the word. Uh, hey, I'm looking for a tough. Okay. Fine. Yeah. I appreciate it. Tough, so. Keith, Trump, Trump even said, go fight like eight. Right. But he didn't mean for the, for the people to get carried away. No, I, no, I agree, and I still think too that those people were you know, so a lot. Of the, let me tell you about the the, the, the demon rats, aka Democrats. Uh-huh. They were seeing somebody in there with, with with a Confederate flag. That that ain't that is not a conservative. That is somebody they then then the the, the the news media focused in on the Confederate flag, which they they, they they put people in there too now. They put people in there to incite riots, and they put people in there with these flags and all this. Stuff. So the media, the liberal media, can focus in on them and say, "Oh, look what they're doing." People got to get smart and they got to get tough. That's all. I mean, I'm glad you said the word tough. Yeah. At least tough. Like, 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 uh, like you said, uh, Trump said tough. So sometimes, yes, I'd be like, now you say protest, and then sometimes you, you know, you'll say this. I'd be like, no, no, you got to get tough, man. We got to get tough because it's hard to be a Thursday with a bunch of doggone people that don't want to fight back. It's like, man, I might want to get off the team because y'all ain't want to fight back. I appreciate it, Keith. Fair point. In fact, I have a story on that. So thank you, man. I, I will pass. All right, thanks a lot, Hake, man. All right. I, yeah, yeah, I just want people to comment on that. All right, so take care, Hake. All right, you too. Bye, right, man. Bye. I protested outside a, a female politician's home. Did you hear about that? I think I told you about that. This is December 2020. December 5th, I think, 2020. It was a Saturday morning, late morning, between 11 and 3 p.m., I might have left a little early. Left around like 1.30 or 2. Sheila Kuehl, you're so cruel. Remember that story of that phony Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors with this, I think it's all woman-led. Maybe there's a male on it, a black male on it, who's like a male feminist. I think it's, is that guy Mark Ridley hyphen Thomas on it? He took his, he took his wife's name and added to his own name when he got married to... Someone, Ridley? Anyway, uh, they voted to clamp down during the, the scam endemic on the restaurants and bars and everywhere across L.A. County, except for Pasadena. Pasadena had their own health department. But every other city that was in Los Angeles County that didn't have its own health department They voted to not even allow outdoor dining. Not even outdoor dining. But Sheila Kuehl, who voted to ban outdoor dining temporarily during the scamdemic in December 2020, she was seen that same night that she voted that, or the next night, because it was going to, the ban was going to go into effect after the weekend or something like that. She was seen at her favorite, uh, her favorite, Italian restaurant in Santa Monica outside dining one last time before the ban if she thought it was so urgent which she didn't apparently she's like oh let me go outside and dine (laughs) so anyway here's clip 13a little ABC 7 Eyewitness news report from Los Angeles, specifically the city of Santa Monica. December 6, 2020 report. Restaurant and bar owners protest L.A. County outdoor dining ban at the home 
Am I wrong for protesting at her home? Of course, my crowd is better than the pro-abortion or Black Lives Matter scumbag crowd, I say. It was a mixed crowd. There's some liberals there, too. You know, the liberals don't like the shutdowns either, some of them. The more, the more sensible ones, if there is such a thing. ABC 7 Los Angeles, a little one-minute report, news report on the protests. And you may even see me in there if you have good eyes. <laughs> Here it is. Restaurant and bar owners protesting outside Supervisor Sheila Kuehl's house in Santa Monica today, angry that outdoor dining in L.A. County has been shut down. More controversy erupted when Kuehl was seen dining outside just hours after voting to eliminate it. Even were the county to reverse the order, California's new state order banning outdoor dining, dining supersedes it and will take effect Monday for at least the next three weeks. They yank us back and forth. They don't give us any warning that they're going to shut down. All of a sudden, we have all these bills that we can't pay because they tell us the day of the shutdown that you can't work anymore. Those owners Great. say they feel they're being targeted and blamed for the surge without scientific proof that outdoor dining causes more spread of the virus, arguing yeah. that outdoor dining in a controlled environment keeps people from gathering indoors in private homes. <laughs> Uh, I spotted me at the end. There was this dumb, young, black kid. I'm calling him a kid. He might have been 18 or 20-something. Going, trying to argue with them with his mask on. Everybody had to wear their outdoor mask in, uh, although many of them didn't, in the city of Santa Monica. And he's protesting. uh, He's arguing with the protesters, acting like he's so smart. (laughs) <laughs> and there was a fake news headline from Washington Examiner about this. Uh, protesters surround the home. We did not surround the home of L.A. politician who voted to ban outdoor dining before dining outdoors herself. Let us work. It's a Washington Examiner. We did not surround her home, although her home was like on a corner. But we had to be across the street... This was 11 a.m. on a Saturday. Most people hopefully out. She wasn't even home herself. I did see uh, Dave Rubin. Based Dave Rubin. Reasonable liberal. He made an appearance. Showed up late. Left early. I thought to say hi to him, but I didn't. Uh, Here's a little here's a little bit more footage of that clip 13B. This is from Epic Times reporter, Epoch Times reporter Jamie Joseph. After 11 a.m. December 5th, Los Angeles, really Santa Monica neighborhood. Current scene down here in front of LA Supervisor Sheila Kuehl's home, who voted to ban outdoor dining in LA County. Uh, here it is. We have bartenders with babies and children and they can't pay their rent. They can't eat. And it's because of you, Sheila Curley, as you laugh and dine and eat out. Maybe you should hand over your paycheck to all these businesses that have been shut down. Let us work. Yeah. Let us work. 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 Let us work! I think I hear me. Let us work! Nice. I was a little fatter back then, too. Hake rocking the new balance like a true king. Thank you, man, Canadian David. (laughs) Trust a Canadian to know what a true king is. And, yeah, the, the online flyers showed her house address. I covered up the house address on this online flyer. And they said ma- masks and tests encouraged in Santa Monica. They were requiring it, right? Psycho. But you had to, otherwise the cops would uh, arrest you. Get on your case, I imagine. Yes, signs. Yes, social distancing. And uh, we- the women that you heard were business owners. Pineapple Hill Saloon. Sheila Kuehl, you are 86th. Politicians are 86th. 11 to 3. I don't know. As home, out, as outside ho- the home protests go, 
That one was very nice. That one was maybe, maybe too nice, although I don't know. What a mess. She wasn't even home. I don't even think she was home. We should have camped out there. No, the cops, but the cops forced us to stay like such and such 50 feet away from the house. We were across the street. Dave Rubin is not based. He is a child bleep, groom bleeper, groomer, because, you know, I'm not for that uh, gay adoption, so-called gay. So wrong. By the way, I'm going to be debating against Hunter Avalone. Speaking of, uh, you know, the gays and all that mess, I will be debating against Hunter Avalone the 17th, I think, Tuesday evening, perhaps? At least that's, it's tentatively scheduled. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Modern Day Debate. Shout out to Modern Day Debate. I've debated Hunter Avalone once before on the imaginary racism issue, and his wife... Uh, the very kind, what's her name? Cassie Avalon? I forget. About is there a war on men? But, uh, yeah, I don't like these women-led protests. They're not always properly ill-advised. Although, you know, they, they have a legitimate gripe. They're business owners. They're, they're employees and they themselves hurting. From the commie shutdowns, the onerous shutdowns. So wrong. Doesn't make him a child predator. Stop. No, I know, but that's, but it is in a sense. I'm not talking about the, uh, in the, in the legal term child predator, but in the sense, it's, it's so wrong. To be pushing your mess on children. It is. It is a form of, like, vampirism, if you will. Because you're trying to brainwash the kid to be like, Oh, this is right. This is normal. This is a family. That's not a family, dude. Dude. Am I right? (laughs) Please. Anyway, quickly, before the end of the hour, I gotta get to Bobby in Texas. I asked him to review... The fact check on 2,000 mules from, what, the Denver Post, Associated Press, maybe? Bobby in Texas, how are you doing? Thank you for calling. What's up? I'm doing great, man. How are you doing, Mr. Hake? Doing well. Thank you. So, uh, real quick, I wanted to do a couple comments before we jump right into it. Um, Like, on the Georgia election there, uh, or not Georgia, I'm sorry, the uh, Nebraska-Georgia election. So Trump was uh, unsuccessful. Yeah. On his, on his candidates. So, That's with the Rhino you know, he, governor and Rhino secretary of state, Brad Raffensperger and Brian Kemp. That's Georgia. I'm talking Nebraska with oh. Herbster. Oh, okay. All right. The one that he just, they just were reporting that he lost with, uh, well, not he like lost, 30. but his, yeah, his endorsed candidate lost right. the primary. Well, the way they push it, you know, how the media will push this as, oh, he lost. That shows the limit of his power. He's, So Trump endorsed 130 candidates for the upcoming midterms. Yeah. So he's like, he's lost one. So if he ends up with like 129 and one, you know, they'll they'll echo back to this governor election and be like, yeah, he shows his power. He can't can't even get this governor in Nebraska and like, who was really attacked. I kind of wonder, you know, why they fought so hard to keep this one off. Like he seemed to take really a lot of uh, a lot of heat he must have been pretty pretty base huh all right but uh, but yeah, i just i just thought that was odd to have 129 and then you're so such a push now about oh he didn't get this one guy into office so it's he has no power his power has run its course but <clears throat> to first let's talk about this uh 2000 mules so before we get in I mean, we all know it was the uh, most secure election of all time. All of the, you know, things from this this uh, documentary were based on science. But were they? I mean, I didn't hear Fauci, you know, give it the, you know, the, give it the green light. So was it really science? Right. And I, I'm going to just kind of go through. I don't want to, you know, really bog it down with 
talking about the whole article. It's pretty long, and so I just kind of went through one of the uh, talking points that she that she went with, which was uh, in Philadelphia having 1,155 mules who illegally uh, collected and dropped off ballots for money. Yeah. So, so the senator in Pennsylvania, Sharif, I don't know, it doesn't sound like a very American name, but okay. He says like he would have been counted as one of the mules because he went, you know, to these nonprofits and to voting boxes every day in the course of his commute between his political offices. So the way that they did their search or their study there was with the uh, geolocation via apps and tracking services, similar to how the police work. Okay. And they, they say like, so they, you know, these people may have been at these nonprofits in the election booth, but they could have just been driving by. Well, Sharif said he could have been counted as a mule due to his. So first let's, let's clear his. So that's based on documents from the time of the, voting started in the time of the, the day of the election. Those were the times where you'd be at those two locations. Well, he was going to through the course of his uh, going to work and whatnot. So he would have been excluded from the, from the, what do you call it? From the, the set of mules based on that's his current, you know, that's his usual route. He usually goes by those voting booths. He usually goes by the nonprofit. So he would have been excluded as a potential mule because it was only people that went and they researched their their habits based on like their routes and habits prior to the election so they had you know a more stable uh what do you call it more stable uh control group so they pick out the people who were just during the election that were specifically going from the nonprofit to these uh drop-off booths so I mean, the article itself isn't, you know, it's not that bad. I figured it would be worse. It, I mean, they do the best they can to kind of to shine the negative light on it. But at the end of the day, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty clear, you know, these people were doing something nefarious. You can't, like I said yesterday, you're, you know, you can't say that they were all voting for Biden and you can't say they were all voting for Trump because there's no, you know, they didn't do their job and find out at the time. So at this point, those ballots have been opened and are just like shuffled into the mix. So you'll really never know who they were for. Right. But they do have these people, these mules were at Antifa. You know, they were also located at Antifa riots throughout the summer. Like they have wow. their geolocation placing them at Antifa BLM riots. And they're like, well, those could have been, you know, conservatives or people that were just there for the cause. I mean, come on conservatives weren't showing up at those riots to, you know, to be, you know, just for, for any reason, like they share their discontent in other ways, but, right. you know, so they, they try and say like, Oh, it could have been anyone. I could have been a conservatives dropping ballots for Trump, but it's, I think it's pretty clear. Like if, if the people were doing what they say they were doing, they were likely for Biden. But again, Proving it is going to be impossible. Or I guess it's Trump. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. I mean, proving it's what's impossible. So, right. you know, you can you can watch the video, you know, you can watch the documentary and, you know, make your own mind up. I thought it was pretty good. I mean, it's not a whole lot of stuff you probably don't already know or don't already suspect. But, and I, there was the fellow Prager, you know, the, forget his first name, uh, the guy that has the, uh, the big kind of fat fella, uh, well, Prager, whatever his first name is. You're talking matter. about Dennis Prager? Yeah, Dennis Prager. He's on there with uh, Charlie Kirk and a couple of other, you know, major guys. And he was like, he was very speculative about, like, he was, uh, he called himself agnostic to the, uh, right. to the election fraud or anything like that. He was like, I don't know, like, I haven't seen the proof. If I see the proof, you know, then I'm, I'm, you know, fighting it. And he, you know, they were able to sway his opinion, which, I mean, he is conservative. So swaying the opinion in the way we want it to go is probably, you know, not the most ringing endorsement for the movie. But I, I would think anybody should watch it and make their own mind up. You know, it's, okay. if you don't think the facts are valid, you know, 
discredit discount them, but I do believe like their their methods were sound, and it sounds to me like whether it is enough to swing the election or not, I think that it proves that there was you know something going on yeah. that wasn't wasn't right and wasn't you know normal to politics. Or it maybe definitely it, was normal to it politics. definitely wasn't normal in that they had drop boxes, whether that was legal or not. They let it happen, and they mailed out ballots to every idiot so that every idiot could vote very easily. So they loosened right, some it. People receiving, it was, it was know, unprecedentedly loose. That's, some people receiving, you know, multiple ballots, three, four ballots. Yeah, I don't know if, I don't know. It's, it's hard to know, like, whether that would affect anything. It's hard to know yeah, what actually know affected, affected anything. I think a lot of times people were barking up the wrong tree. Like, people were looking at something that didn't look right on video, and it turned out that that thing was either normal or explainable or something. But right. it's, I don't know, it's, it's confusing. Without having seen the did. video, I, I, it's, I have a hard time following what they did, how they even came up with this information, how Dinesh and his people were able to track this data and all that stuff. But, uh, they talk about that in the movie. I don't. I will yeah. go into that because I don't remember either. I couldn't give you an accurate depiction of how they got it. They do talk about it in the movie where they received it. But their fact to check. Me, the most their fact check w- didn't debunk it for you, huh? No, like I think it's like them doing the best they can to discredit it, and I think they did. They did a decent job. It makes you definitely kind of suspect to some of their uh, their claims, but I also. I feel like they're grasping as well. Like, I think both sides are, you know, equally, you know, they're grasping to try and disprove it, and right. maybe Dinesh D'Souza's is grasping to try and make it make it more believable. Yeah. And, I mean, to me, the most telling thing was, like, on election night that these particular places stopped counting ballots, and then when you wake up in the morning and there's such a dramatic switch when they weren't supposed to be counting ballots... Like that, that to me was a very uh, interesting. I guess would be the best term for it. It didn't. It definitely didn't down. lead to public trust, at least not on yeah. the part of the people who were rooting for the main man. So, like, let's kick out all these people to watch the ballot counting, and then you see ballots showing up in places like Michigan and stuff. And I mean, maybe that is, like, legit. Maybe that's how it happens. I doubt it, but possibly. And then they, but the fact that they removed everyone, stopped counting, and then you wake up in the morning and somehow they started counting again, and yeah. there's hundreds of thousands of votes swing in those particular states right. that decided the election. Well, but, thank uh, you for checking that out, Bobby. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, I, I appreciate you pointing that to me. I, was, I like to see kind of both sides of things to Same kind of here. Get, make my actual opinion on it. But yeah. I, I still think that Suze is a good guy. I think he has the right... I think that the, the facts tell a different story. You know, I think that those people definitely could have been paid. Could they hide something like that? Could they keep somebody from, you know, whistleblowing in a situation like that with 2,000 people? That's, that, that is a lot of people to keep quiet. Right. It seems like they could get paid you know, more money by coming out and talking, but maybe, maybe not. I mean, D'Souza couldn't even get two of his friends to, uh, you know, donate <laughs> money him, to a huh? campaign. Yeah. yeah so, <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I just recommend, I think people should watch it. Okay. Give them an idea and then they can make their own mind up. Sounds good, man. Take care. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. All right. Thank you. We're going to get to more of your calls. We are past... We are five minutes after the top of the hour, guys, just about. It is time for some Lust Control. Indeed, that's the name of the group, Lust Control. It's a Christian band, or was supposedly Christian. And two tracks for you guys. Uh, First, I want to play track four on We Are Not Ashamed, getting it right the second time. It's a re-release from originally released 1992, the re-release 2006. Uh, Return to Vomit is the first track, and the second, If You Fail. Don't worry, guys. Fret not. It's only going to be a little bit over three and a half minutes long. Not another more than five-minute thing this time. But two tracks courtesy of Lust Control, 
Press mute or cover your ears, you musical Philistines, or grin and bear it. And I'll be right back for the rest of Hour 2. Hang tight. Back to your calls. So good. Am I right? Please, no, says Sal. It's a small world after all. Is that what they say? Is that what they Guitar solo. Perfect song for election year. <laughs> <laughs> and whipping you up fine, but you're thinking wrongly, and kisses on his mind. I never mute, says Jacob34. That's a trooper. For you, shell the trusted brother, you know he's fallen too. All of us are human, he wasn't until really he's spoken. God can really use this when our heart needs it broken. So don't look at problems, stop telling the pretty things. Just reject to Jesus and the rest raise new brains. Blind in your failing, get yourself off your mind. God uses broken vessels, they're his favorite kind. Not much talent, is this a high school band? Whoa. That's cold. Is that bo- that's both of the songs, right? Is that both of the songs? Nice. Whew. Thank you guys for bearing with me through the beautiful music. Nice heavy guitar riffs, says Esoteric. Thank you, man. Hague punching drywall. Oh my gosh, this is awful, says Ashley. Shout out to the Facebook crew. This group listens to the Beastie Boys. <laughs> says Matt living the dream. Press mute. Totally kidding. Sounds like Newsboys. Newsboys? Come on. These guitars are killer. That's right. That's right. Punk and Christianity don't mix. Says Free Ross. Ears bleeding. This over Frog Eyes, though. Thank you, Dan. Although I liked Frog Eyes. Actually, I think I might even prefer Frog Eyes. If Hake was, wasn't was bullied as a kid for listening to this, then he should be bullied now. <laughs> Says uh, Brandon M. Well, thank you guys bearing with me through the wonderful lust control music. That kind of stunk. And he didn't. He used a different word, Robert, over there on YouTube. Um, 
Well, nice. I'll get, I'm going to get to phony Amber Heard and then fake notions about gun violence and all that mess. But first, let me get to Joe in Idaho. He wants to talk about people protesting outside of people's homes. Joe in Idaho, how are you? Hey, I'm good. How you doing? Fine. You're good. No man is good. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm well. Nice. I'm forgetting. Right on. Yeah. So, so you moved I'm to no Idaho, longer, no longer in PDX. You are correct. Now I'm in CDA. P- PDA. Lane, Idaho. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. So, it's much nicer here. I bet. No more, yeah, no commies, no homeless, no degenerates. It's just good old-fashioned American values and uh, good people. That's cool. Congratulations. And lots of potatoes. Thank you. So, I just wanted to comment regarding protesting outside of people's homes. Uh... I think it's wrong to do that. I think it's it's a form of terrorism. I don't think people should be doing that for several reasons. Uh, first of all, this will it will uh, it will probably affect the neighbors who may be completely innocent. Yeah. Uh, also. The, yeah, the, the person that's being protested might have children and other people living in their home uh, that might be terif- you know, terrified of what's going on. And considering that, you know, they may not know what's going to happen. I mean, Antifa has vandalized people's homes. Yeah. They've, you know, they've, they've done destruction. They've tried to set people's homes on fire. Really? So, yeah. They've if definitely done somebody, it to people's businesses and killed people. Um, yeah. Yeah, they threatened, didn't they scare, uh, Tucker Carlson's wife and children, I think? Yep, yep. Tagged yeah. up his beautiful, uh, driveway over there in Washington, D.C. area. Beautiful yeah. area. I mean, they, they marched, when I lived in Portland, they marched down my street with AR-15s in hand, threatening wow. to smash people's windows. Antifa, huh? Yeah. So... What about, I mean, my, what about my protesting outside of Sheila Kuehl's house? We were a pretty well-behaved crowd on the whole. Yeah, of course. You know, patriots are not going to do that sort of thing, right. probably. I don't, but, I don't think the, the kids were scared inside, of us, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. The people inside don't know that. You know what I mean? Say again? It can be a terrifying... The people who are inside their home don't know that. They don't know what you're going to do. So it can be, you know, a very scary experience. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, there might be children in there, you know. I think that ours, we did it in an orderly way. I think the police were already present before we even showed up, so they were aware of it. And we followed the policeman's rules. Like, we were not even, we didn't go onto their porch. There was no going onto their porch. We stayed 50 feet away. And maybe that's, maybe that's too orderly. I don't know. Yeah. But But they don't know that. They don't know what you're going to do. And, you know, just, it's just, uh, I, I think it's, it's going too far. It's just going too far. And it's, you know, the, there's neighbors that are affected. Yeah. You know, why, why should they be affected? They didn't do anything. And maybe they voted for these phony politicians. And maybe they need to confront but them. But not necessarily. <laughs> but not necessarily, yeah. Yeah, they, I know. You know. It's true. Yeah, remember uh, Rand Paul's neighbor tackled him in his yard, mm-hmm. in his own yard, I think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's different. But yeah. So, yeah, I, you know, I, I really don't think it's okay to be protesting outside of people's homes. I, I just think that's going too far. Uh, name them over on D Live. Name who says cringe? Take go back to Portland, you homosexual. <laughs> Sorry, kids. <laughs> <laughs> but I, it was too funny not to read that out loud. <laughs> uh, funny. Uh, well, whoever that person is doesn't know what they're talking about. Whoa. Dang. Shots fired. Inter, yeah. Inter-listener uh, conflict. I like it. No, I can't. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I know you don't. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's just my opinion. All right. Yeah. Um, what Because what we're doing is not enough. And Matt, 
Living the Dream, I think, said that protesting doesn't do anything but get you on a list. Uh, and th- there I could be some truth that. to that. If I, I'm already maybe on a list. I'm pretty public on, a, yeah. on the internet, at least. Yeah. But what I, would I, you I say is, that. What, was, that what's an alternative? What is a, a good, aggressive, assertive way for men to stand up for their country and community? Legally and peacefully protesting, but not outside of somebody's home. Do it outside of their, you know, office, their, you know, where they work, uh, a, a business, that sort of thing, but not their home. All right. And if you get enough people, enough people protesting, it will make the news and it will make, <laughs> it could make changes. We need to become the news part of it. Yeah. I don't know. There's there's a lot of different ways to fight uh, for what's right yeah. in the right way. Yeah. Uh, but I think, you know, I think we need to be civil, though. That's a liberal word. <laughs> <laughs> I understand what you're saying, but I believe in law and order. I mean, I'll, yeah. I'll put it that way. I believe in law and order. I agree and, with you on that. Yeah. So, and that's being civil, you know? I mean, I think those, the values of law and order are aligned with being civil. Right. So, uh, you know, I think as conservatives, as patriots, I think we need to respect other people's property, respect their right to privacy, and respect law and order. Because otherwise... We become Antifa. Yeah, don't be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. But there is there are good, tough, strong ways, and I think it's more than just protesting. There's great ways to. Uh, <laughs> Hake wants to smash windows. Oh lord! <laughs> there are good ways to fight back. In your, I think you start with uh, yourself and live yeah. right, and pay attention to the, even the small things. But yeah, I appreciate it, Joe, sure. in Idaho. I wish you well over there. Or, Thank you. Or go back to Portland, you homosexual. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a homosexual. Shout out to I'm Naomi. not going back to Portland. Nice. I wish yeah, you well, that man. That is a horrible place. Thank you, you very much. You're Dave. the one who's, are you the one who's not Christian? You are correct. Okay. All right. Do you do JLP's yeah. silent prayer? No. Because you don't have to be a Christian. Uh, well, I don't. Have you checked I don't it out? Understand. No. Oh, okay. What is? What is? I mean, I've heard him mention silent prayer many times, but right. I don't even know what it is. Okay. What is it? Type in on your web browser thingy, silentprayer.video, or type in rebuildingtheman.com/church, and then click on the silent prayer link at the top. It'll take you okay. right to the info that you can uh, listen all about it. Okay, I will. If you're interested. Yeah. All right, man. I want to find out what it's about. Okay, cool. take care. All right. You Bye. too, Joe. That's, isn't that nice? <laughs> Protesting will get you doxxed 100%. Go protest, and depending on the situation, you will lose your privacy. Yeah, Hake said the H word. Oh no! <laughs> uh, I know. Sorry, kids. I disavow that the H word, even though I said it. Let me read uh, a super chat or two, guys. Um, single mom over there on streamlabs.com/slash the Hake report. Shout out to single mom, who may be a subscribed star supporter, by the way, and you could be too. I reviewed. Just a side note before I get to Single Mom's Super Chat. I reviewed The Batman movie on my Subscribestar exclusive content. Subscribestar.com. Type that into your URL browser thingy. You probably don't know what a URL is if you don't know how to get there. (laughs) Some of these guys, these boomers and gals, millennials, don't know how to go to an internet website. They're like, what is that on YouTube? The heck? Uh, 
Subscribestar.com slash The Hague Report. Support me there on a monthly basis, and you will get uh, exclusive content. And you get uh, my review, if anybody was wondering, of the Batman. I, I liked Batman growing up. I've watched all of the movies except for the cringy Ben Affleck one. That doesn't even count as a Batman movie. I don't watch any of those. But I saw the one with the, the guy from uh, the vampire movie, the pretty boy vampire guy. And the guy whom I called a Welsh actor, but he calls himself an English actor, Christian Bale, with his cr- cringy girlfriend trying to preach at him. Worse than the SJW mixed Catwoman trying to preach, too. Worse than her. So anyway, a single mom with a super chat asks, Do you think Joy Reid actually believes what she's saying, or is she just some 50-something-year-old wash saying whatever it takes to keep her spot on daytime television? Single mom, that's an... Excellent question. I haven't listened a lot to Joy Reid, but I have listened more than many. Joy Reid, joyless, hard, can't read. <laughs> uh, she's the black female who's on MS, LSD, MSDNC. No, she doesn't believe what she's saying. She doesn't believe what she's saying. She used to make fun of the radical homosexuals or homosexuals or something like that, and then she's all, allegedly, right? She's all, I was hacked. My old blog posts were hacked, and they put that hateful stuff in there. I don't believe that stuff. Meanwhile, like, everybody was making fun of the gays back in the day, and now she's, she supports them. Of course she supports evil, but she wasn't, She believes differently from what she's letting on. She knows that she has to play the game. That's what I say, single mom. Some of it, maybe she is delu- I mean, you have to be deluded to go along with lies in some form or another. But I don't think it's real. I don't- I don't- she's not a real- She's not genuine. She's a phony. She's a fake. Lin Yen Chin says, Egro. Yes, Lord Good Hair, the N-word. Negro. Read the last part. Oh! Too late, Borg. Resistance is optional. We high. You will be adapted to service. Our weed. Wow. I don't know what you're talking about, but E. Grow. As in, uh, I think that's talking about growing weed. I don't follow it exactly, Lin Yen Chin, but it's not good. Resistance is optional, we high. Oh, yeah. Keep the people high on weed, high on pot, so they don't show up and protest outside people's houses. And I wonder if Joe from Idaho smokes pot. But that's a personal question. Keep it in the closet. Uh, and try not to give in to that mess. No! Act like Jesus is with you all the time. Because he is. He sees everything you do. To quote Lust Control, song The Big M. (laughs) Lorena H. with a super chat asks, or says, Hi, Hake. Have you heard Brazil is building a new Jesus statue that is taller than the one they already have? You mean that Jesus statue that has his arms outstretched like this? That's cool. Many Americans commented, we need one here. I don't see that helping if we don't know ourselves. Thoughts? Yeah, I agree. What does the Bible say on statues? Have no graven image. And JLP uh, takes that to mean, seemingly takes that to mean, have no, no image in your mind. Have no, like, ideas, preconceived notions. Even the ones that you pulled from the Bible because Satan interprets the Bible for you. You know your imagination. You, get, you jump to the wrong conclusion all the time about what the Bible's saying. Or you repeat it. You may even repeat it accurately. But you don't have it. For real, for real. Uh, I agree that it is just, it's kind of like, I hate to say this, but the beautiful Confederate American statues of Confederate American heroes that were erected after, uh, the South was railroaded and 
and and lost and America really lost America lost the Civil War America lost the Civil War and then with the reconstruction that was more like deconstruction it was destructive destructive and we built those things it's kind of like the oh we're we're building these things is like an act of defiance so the Christians I in my impression my imagination of what's going on in Brazil I picture it as Brazil's having a tough time right now. It's an attack on Christians across the world, on true Christianity around the world. So they're building the Jesus statue, I imagine, to be like, oh, yes, we need to stand for Christianity, but it's not a real stand. They're, they're hoping and wanting a return to uh, true freedom and true morality and true godliness, true Americanness, the beautiful South wanted, but it's slipping away even as we're building up images uh, to uh, to commemorate the true American heroes or the true uh, greatest hero, Jesus Christ. Do you follow what I'm trying to say? Um, I agree. We we got to know ourselves and repent. The statues are just it's a nice symbol, and you don't want the evil people to be tearing down the symbols. You don't let that happen. But you also don't be overcome with evil within. Don't be overcome by evil within. Very nice. Have no graven image. Light skin Jesus statue. <laughs> Christ of the Ozarks is similar to the one in Brazil, says Robbie. By the way, it was Robbie who gave me that tip yesterday on the black female Memphis mayor, uh, who, no, not Memphis mayor, Memphis M- police department chief, chief of police, black female, who got her, uh, her, uh, stuff stolen. Rich, come on, don't be vulgar. What's up, Rich? Rich called into my show. <laughs> Repent. Of your evil and your weakness and uh, stuff like that. What was I talking about? Rich got me distracted. I lost track of what I was talking about, but thank you, Lor- Lorena H. Lorena H. For the super chat. And yeah, we have to become real Christians, not these phony people. So many, mo- so many of the Christians are so phony. And then all of the atheists are phony. Except for a few who are... Yeah, the black female police chief. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Yeah, it was Robbie who gave me that tip. She got her gun stolen out of her car. She claims it was in a lockbox. Do you believe it? I don't know. But that was January 2022. He gave me that tip. I misstated Bobby. It was Robbie. Just a little correction there. Thank you, Super Chatters. Let me double check over there on... Odyssey, O-D-Y-S-E-E dot com slash at the hate report. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. I got to get to Rick in Hampton, Virginia. Rick is on the line. How are you doing? Rick, get ready, Rick. What's going on, James? Hey. How you doing? Hanging out. Doing all right? Yeah, doing Can well. Thank me? you. Okay, good, good. Man, did you hear about, um, what's that, um, Delaware State? They got pulled over in Georgia, right? It's a historical black college. So the police pulled them over. Now they're screaming racism. Oh, really? And yeah. was, who is this who got pulled over and is screaming this, racism? Well, yeah, um, it was Georgia State University. No, I'm sorry, Delaware State University, a historical black college in Delaware. So they're traveling through Georgia. So the reason why the police pulled them over for because they had a big bus in a fast lane going slow, so that they pulled them over. Yeah. And so when they pulled them over, they searched you know, some of the bags and stuff, and then um, now they're crying racism. Now, you know, um, Dr. Rashad Richie, he's already all on it, and uh, he's talking about was racism. It was, you know, they said, you know, because uh, you in the state 95, it's the gateway of drugs from Miami on, because it goes to all the wow. major cities on the East Coast. Yeah. So... They've been saying they've been trying to guard against, you know, human trafficking on 95. So, wow, you know, so that's you're going to hear that story be coming up pretty soon, my brother. 
Wow. Interesting. Thank you for yeah. the tip. And he's a so, he's a president of a of a historically black college or university, HBCU. Yep, that's it. It's Delaware State. And, and so he's crying the- racism when they're trying to get a handle on the drugs and uh, human trafficking going up right. and down and their it, interstate. Wow. And they're trying to say it was profiling. So the reason why they pulled the bus over took what I read the report, but like, you know, like like y'all say, have a wait to see attitude. Right. So I'm going to wait. St- stay close to the phone. The oh, can you hear me now, James? That's a little better. Thank you. Okay, yeah, so. I'm going to have a wait-to-see attitude to see what happens because all we have right now is the media and um, Delaware State side of the story. Yeah. True. And um, I'm just going to wait to the to I hear the law enforcement side while they pull them over. And I believe that that's a legit reason because, you know, like, the right lane is where slower traffic move at. So if you want to pass, you can pass on the left lane. But if you got a big bus on the left lane driving slow, and then the v- people on the right driving slow, it's blocking traffic. Right. Yeah, you're supposed to stay on so the right the, side. In general, you're right. supposed to hang out on the right side and less to pass when it's a Correct. two-lane highway. Learn yep. how to drive. That's right, and that's, that's a good reason to get pulled over because that bolstered me that he's holding up traffic, so the police pulled him over. Nice. And they are crying racism, as always, and... And Dr. Rashad, you know, did Dr. Rashad originally used to be with the Turks? I mean, was he a reporter on there or something? He was on. He was a a host on the Young Turks. I don't know if he still is, but he kicked JLP off his show like yeah, five minutes after inviting him on. I mean, he invited him he on, and then I less than that five minutes in, he kicked him off. <laughs> Ridiculous. I thought it was so funny when you like say, "Get this clown off my show!" Right. But yet he, He's he the insults clown. people too. Yeah, yep. he insults people too. True. You know, it's, it's okay for liberals, man. They do stuff, and then when they have, um, then when they have their own, get a dose of their own medicine, now they're hauling racism. Ridiculous. Yeah. Interesting. So, well, thank you for yeah. the tip, Rick. No problem there, James, man. So, um, other than that, oh, you know what, too? I wouldn't be surprised the liberals knowing they're about to get smashed in the polls. I wouldn't be surprised they're trying to come up with a new virus and trying to keep people or make people afraid to come vote. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. That's why know. you know they're putting Doc, Dr. Falsey is starting to resurrect now. So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to pull out another virus coming up and scare people half to death from uh, going to vote. Crazy. What a mess. And, um, yeah. You might, and be, you might be right. You know, and hopefully people just stay the course, trust your immune system, take care of your body. And keep on ticking. Get to them polls, man. Cause we gotta get these people out of here. Yeah. Well, Even thank the you, liberals Rick. don't talk about what's going on. Oh, thank you, Jay. I ain't gonna mean to be long with about just no be glad to get on y'all show, man. So anyway, man, love you guys. Keep up the good work there, brother James. All right. Problem, man. It's, it's, hard to get, it's hard to get on your show now, man. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's getting busier. Well, take care, yeah. man. Love you guys. Be blessed. Okay. All right. You as well. I have the little headline from what Rick was talking about, HBCU president incensed by Georgia Sheriff's drug search of the lacrosse team out of reporting out of Savannah, Georgia. The president of a historically black college accuses sheriff's deputies in Georgia of intimidating and humiliating the, wo- the school women's lacrosse team when deputies pulled over the athlete's bust and searched it for drugs. Delaware State University President Tony Allen said he's incensed. So he wasn't on board, uh, but he's taking the side of his female students, student-athletes. By the April 20th traffic stop along I-95 south of Savannah as the team returned from a game in Florida, in a letter to students and faculty, uh, Tony Allen said nothing was illegal was found, allegedly, according to him, and campus officials were exploring options for recourse, legal and otherwise. Oh, they want to sue. They want to get money. And they want, uh, he wants, uh, you know, HBCUs. I wonder how their attendance is. He wants press. We do not intend to let this or any other incident like it pass idly by. He posted a letter mo- on, uh, on Monday to social media. Liberty County Sheriff William Bowman, who also is black, said Tuesday's office is con- Oh, gosh. A formal review of the traffic stop. 
Deputies stopped, had stopped other commercial vehicles in the same morning, found drugs on a different bus. So I was traveling in the left lane, violation of Georgia law. Deputies decided to search the team's bus when a dog sniffing, drug sniffing dog alerted alongside it. I do not exercise racial profiling, allow racial profiling, or encourage racial profiling, to, which is not a good idea. You should. You should uh, risk assessment, right? I believe the stop was legal, though, he said. Ridiculous. Two white deputies are on the bus. One of them tells passengers possessing marijuana remains illegal in Georgia. Nice. If there's anything in y'all's luggage, we're probably going to find it, okay? I'm not looking for a little bit of uh, marijuana, but I'm pretty sure you guys chaperones are probably going to be disappointed if, in you if we find any. <laughs> Talking to them like they're children, which they are, basically, even though they're adults. You guys are on a lacrosse team, correct? If there's something in there that's questionable, please tell me now. Because if we find it, guess what? We're not going to be able to help you. Some w- s- female student posted a video on the internet and wrote in the campus newspaper that they felt there was underlying racism behind the search. Typical blacks racially profiling the whites as being racist when it's the blacks who hate the whites and they're suspicious of the whites. Quit staring at me like an infrared inward inga. That's what Tupac said before one song. The team members were in shock. Oh yeah, the shock. Stay out of the south. We've had problems here. <laughs> nice. They brought the canine dog to sniff out their language as cops began tossing underwear and other feminine products in an attempt to locate narcotics. What are you supposed to do? Just let them go? Oh, you have women's stuff. Oh, let's not look there. Exactly where they would hide stuff if they were to hide stuff. Georgia courts have held the odor of marijuana is enough to give police probable cause to search vehicles without a warrant. We realize that in, a cur- in the current environment, even a traffic stop can be alarming to citizens, especially African-Americans, said this Bowman guy kissing up. Dumb guy. Black sheriff. Bad idea, am I right? He's only going to kiss Liberty County Sheriff William Bowman, B-O-W-M-A-N, black. And, they, and the New York Post article capitalizes the B in the word black. It's, a, it's an Associated Press, Enemies of America article, reposted to... Uh, New York Post. Ridiculous. Psh. Makes me want to spit. Uh, man. Okay, before I get back to calls, let me cover another fake racism story. Or whatever you want to call it. More murder. More murder. Come again. Something like that. The far left female run out, let the skim reported before I get to Amber Heard. Um, Gun homicides, of which there is no such thing. Jumped, reached record levels in 2020. You know, oh, it was the pandemic. It wasn't Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Yesterday, the far, far left enemies of America scared women led CDC, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, report found firearm homicides jumped nearly 35% from 2019 to 2020. Highest rate in more than 25 years. Leading cause of so-called dun- gun deaths, suicide. I mentioned this in Hake News. Rate of homicidal gun deaths is climbing black Americans, disproportionately killed with guns, saw a 39% of an increase in homicide deaths, all amid the Black Lives Matter riots. Was that happening before May? Uh, before, before June, I mean? Because end of May, throughout all of June, and into maybe even into July and later, were the Black Lives Matter insurrection... Ap- Insurrections across America. But they don't mention that. No, not one word of that. F- phony skim. And other mainstream media outlets. To put the disparity into context, black men and boys ages 10 to 24 were more than 20 times more likely to be killed with guns than white men. That's privilege. That's generational wealth. ABC so-called news quotes this one lady who's with the DD- CDC, a woman, a female, Deborah Howry. I have a picture of her, just so you know. Unfortunately, I am not surprised. She's Deborah, D E B R A, Howry, H O U R Y, Howry. 
acting principal deputy director of the CDC, director of the National Center for Inter- Injury Prevention and Control, told ABC so-called news, far left enemies of America. But it is heartbreaking. So you have these people running the CDC. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and somehow they're involved in uh, so-called gun deaths, gun, gun crimes, homicides in which a gun was used. Get out of my country! Or government or whatever. This is what the skim says. The pandemic may have played a role, say the reality de- deniers, the females. Who, <laughs> look at that. Is that a Christian? Fat. Um, Deborah Horry. But the skim ladies say, I use the term ladies loosely, the pandemic may have played a role in the spike. (laughs) It brought along disruptions in services and education, mental stress, social isolation. The pandemic didn't do that. Your overreaction did that, right? The shutdowns, unnecessary shutdowns, woman minded shutdowns that I talked about yesterday, and economic pressures. The CDC also found that counties with the highest levels of poverty, moral poverty, had nearly five times higher homicide rates than those with the lowest poverty levels. Well, good. Some point to a spike in gun ownership during the pandemic. It was not just during the scamdemic and the shutdowns. It was during that too, right? So we can, you can get riots and civil unrest and theft and all that stuff in desperation because of the shutdowns messing up the economy. Pretty lady. <laughs> Seesaw thinks that I'm going to say pretty lady about Deborah Hurry. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> but no, the gun ownership also increased because of the Black Lives Matter riots that were allowed to take place around the country, threatening people's homes and businesses and all that stuff. Give me a break. These lying people don't even mention they lie by omission and by commission. Criminologists who are liberals, liars, law enforcement officials and health experts, also liars, liberals, say that can happen amid heightened political tensions. Studies also show that higher rates of gun ownership bring more gun-related deaths. All of this comes as some gun control advocates are calling on President Sleepy Biden who asked Congress to pass measures to reduce gun violence, no such thing, to prioritize the issue. A growing number of Americans continue to die at the hands of guns, and Americans are demanding answers, but the country remains divided on a solution. Because you don't even know how to diagnose the issue. Dummies. Anyway, that's that for that. Um, You want to hear about Amber Heard before I get to more calls? Let me play this Amber Heard clip, because I don't want to get caught and not play it. I gotta end on time, guys. I, I gotta steal back two or three minutes from what I've been giving you guys. Or anyway. Uh, phony Amber Heard. Phony women DV mess. DV is short for domestic violence. It's a liberal word to smear men. I saw this article put out uh, via Google curated headlines, right? Google is evil. On Chrome. Chrome is a Google... Google-owned, Alphabet-owned, uh, you know, it's a web platform to surf the internet. Google, there's Chrome, it's Firefox, all these liberal things. Well, it's a USA Today op-ed titled, Amber Heard says she's a victim, but the public made her a villain. No, she made herself a villain. Uh, experts say it's a dangerous moment for domestic violence. Look at this woman. Mildly attractive. <laughs> is she a normal fight? She's not normal. I think she is white, but corrupted. Corrupt. Uh, listen to this article. Uh, and it's funny because this is a USA Today little um, thing. This is from when she was testifying. I guess that was last year. I mean, last week. Something like that. Here's a little clip, minute, less than a minute and a half long. You get to hear this woman talking about her relationship with Johnny Depp. Because she underhandedly accused, maybe the ACLU did it on her behalf, Johnny Depp, a fellow actor. She's an actress, right? Actress. And he's an actor. 
and they had some weird s- shower scene, and then so Satan started talking to them, and they got together when they should not have been together. She, I think she was so-called married to a woman. Weirdo. And then he was already married and had kids. Or maybe he wasn't married, but he had kids with the woman that he was, with whom he was. Um, but they had a shower scene. You know Hollywood's all degenerate. And so they kissed, and they started kissing more, and then they got together. So wrong. So he brought it on himself, but she was an evil person. To this day, she's evil. He may be evil, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weak. He's J- To this day! <laughs> yeah, to this day. Uh, here she is, running her dumb mouth in court, because he sued her for, like, $50 million, because she came out with this... ACLU written, I heard, op-ed posted in the Washington Compost talking about, oh, domestic violence. (laughs) Here's this actor. She's called an actor, but she's an actress. It's called actress when you're a woman. Equality advocates. Listen to this. It wasn't Johnny. He was standing at the office desk. He... Yes. Had his hand wrapped in this, uh, like, rags or, you know, bandana rags. And I I think he took them down or somehow showed me and he said, look what you made me do. I did this for you. Something to that effect. I figured out he was missing a finger. He kind of held it up. And I said, what did you do? When, like, what, what did you do? When? And I realized in my head that there had been many hours I loved this man so much, and it was so toxic, and for some reason I couldn't get him to, I couldn't get him to (laughs) not hurt me, I, I, I could, and it seemed like I was hurting him, we loved each other, loved each other. So much, at least I loved him so much. And I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't, I didn't know what to do with this relationship. If you're watching it, uh, this sad faced woman, if you're watching it, I don't know if you can tell by the tone of voice that doesn't it seem like horrible acting? Thank you. Java Cafecito says horrible acting. Not as talented as Johnny Depp. Some say that Johnny Depp might have been acting, I don't know. He seemed more genuine than her. Generally, males do seem more, a little more genuine than females, for the most part. On social media, this is the article written by Alia Dastagir. Alia E-A-L-I-A. Middle name, middle initial E, Dastagir. Dastagir. Says, on, she writes, I think it's an op-ed. Is it an op-ed? Maybe it's not. On social media, Amber Heard is a punchline. You can, you can hear based on even these select clips. Yeah, she's a punchline, a caricature, a diversion, a meme. The actress says she was physically, sexually, and emotionally abused by her ex-husband, Johnny Depp, who we all know was attacked by her, I'm pretty sure. And the internet is laughing. When she says that she was abused, Heard took the stand last week to defend herself against a defamation lawsuit filed by Depp for an op-ed she wrote in 2018, or maybe the ACLU wrote it, I thought I saw on Fox News, calling herself a public figure representing domestic abuse. Social media users called her her graphic testimony her worst performance, meaning she's bad acting. Sounded like bad acting. She used that vocal fry. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know if I can do it right now. Her worst performance. I loved him. Loved him. (laughs) Terrible. There are YouTube compilations of her most emotional moments. She's been ridiculed for an incident in court when she appeared visibly afraid. A TikTok trend mocks comments about a time that she claims Depp hit her. This restores my faith in humanity. (laughs) Because they can see through her phoniness. One video has more than 22 million views. The loudest voices on the internet may not believe heard, but millions of women who have had experiences like the one she describes. 
Oh, they have had experiences like the one she describes. When people mock her, experts say they're inadvertently laughing at every person who has said they are a victim of abuse. That's a dumb lie from a dumb expert if you, ta- if you ask me. And you should ask me, not these experts. The one in four women who have experienced intimate partner violence. Partner? What? You mean lesbians? Are watching, listening, and weighing the cost of voice. Yeah, speak out and you'll get mocked because you're a liar and you're phony and you're not telling your s- what you did. In the commentary, here's a quote from this Laurel, Laura Palumbo, uh, who is a communications director at National Sexual Violence Resource Center. In the commentary, it's almost as if people are forgetting that this is real life, that this is not a show that we're all watching. Oh, yes, it is. And I will get to calls. Uh, many victims of domestic violence and sexual assault will go into a courtroom at some point and have an experience largely outside of their control in a setting like this. Ex- experts say public reaction to the defamation trial is triggering survivors and perpetuating stereotypes that muddle the cultural conversation on so-called domestic violence, which is a buzzword against men, which still hasn't had its own hashtag Me Too movement. Experts suspect the cause will... The case will contribute to silencing victims who worry about being disbelieved, who on much smaller scales must consider the judgment and attacks they're willing to endure if they speak up. Uh, I wanted to read this one thing because there was a... I thought I saw... Okay, jumping down. The consequences of speaking publicly about alleged abuse. This is funny. On TikTok, the hashtag justice for Johnny Depp has 9.9 billion views. Wow. A similar hashtag for Heard only has 37 million. Wow. Searches for Heard on the platform also bring up hashtag Amber Heard canceled. Hashtag, hashtag Amber Heard stinks. They use sucks, but I, I say stinks. Sorry, kids. And hashtag Amber Heard is trash. <laughs> uh, people have been disparaging Heard since she first accused Johnny Depp of abuse in 2016, and it was her. Depp has maintained she was the aggressor in their relationship. Claimed her Washington Compost op-ed harmed his career and reputation. She wrote how she felt the full force of our culture's wrath for women who speak out. Ironically, the op-ed led to defamation led to the defamation trial was her talking about the consequences she faced speaking publicly about the abuse she claimed that she experienced by someone who was so beloved and respected and connected in Hollywood, said this Palumbo evil woman. Now we see that playing out in a very extreme way. Extreme. Oh, yeah, people talking. Let it not be that people talk. Oh, those experts. So phony, huh? That's what I say. Anyway, I had to share that with you because those are some rich. Just an interesting article from these so-called ladies playing like the woman is victim. They talk out of both sides of their mouths because when you talk to these people, we, uh, they say, oh, anybody can be a, a domestic violence victim because women are just as violent as men, if not more. They're just less effective at it. And they're evil. Um, what a mess, huh? Guys, I got to get brief, very briefly here to Art in Ohio. Art in Ohio, how are you doing? Man, what's up with Hakey Hake Doggy Dog? Not Man, much. Baby. Hanging out. Baby, baby. Yeah. First thing, <laughs> who was that lady you were just talking about? Amber Heard, actress. Amber Heard. Come here, Amber Heard. You gonna, you deserve you deserve two Stone Cold Stunners back to back. <laughs> Whoa. With no, with no beer behind it. Metaphorically speaking, of course. M- metaphorically, metaphorically <laughs> speaking. And then uh, Adam Shifty Shift. We ain't forgot about you neither, you little Trump hater. You deserve three Stone Cold Stunners back to back, and I think I take a drink to I take a drink to that metaphorically. And uh, Chuck Schumer, you too. We ain't forgot about you, 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 uh, you little turtleneck weasel. You you gonna get you three Stone Cold Stunners too, medi- metaphorically back right. to back. Okay. Uh, first thing first, this dude that called from Idaho, he was talking about. He was praising Idaho, like Idaho's the place to be, and da da this, da da that. Where I just thought I just heard about a a politician that had his kid or his daughter's kid was taken away from her, and the course is holding the kid hostage, basically. And he was using the same the same metaphor I was using about that the course is basically 
keeping slavery with with the uh, custody courts active by doing what they doing and uh doing what they doing and with the extorting the men. That's the first thing I want to say about Idaho. Idaho ain't all nicey nice like he's trying to make it because a lot of stuff that they doing in a lot of these democratic areas like Ohio and where I'm at is the same thing going around in these other democratic areas. Yeah, it's true. And I think you did a story about it too about the uh, it's a it's a politician in Idaho. I I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure you did do uh do uh, something about it. Then uh, yeah, there was a lesbian wanna... mayor of like. I forget which city over there in Idaho. It's a shame. It's a bad yeah. st- situation. Then I, yeah. Then I was watching a clip last night about some dude that uh, had escaped. I think it was in Alabama. And he got out the back of the uh, van or whatnot. And I guess they didn't lock the van door up. And the female, he hopped out the thing and busted her in the face. And then went for the gun outside the van or whatnot that was in the front of the van and shot like two other officers. Wow. And it was, this is how they try to put these females in these so-called positions like they can handle them. And I'm like, aight, aight, y'all keep it up, aight, y'all gonna keep getting these men hurt. Yeah. So, uh, so then to go back on to your Memphis, uh, police chief, aight, she down there trying to be all manly, man. Yeah. They all, they all want to be, try to take the man's job or whatnot. She don't allegedly locked her gun up in the uh, a, a box or whatnot. Whatever, we don't believe nothing you liberal say. I know. So it just my thing is, why are they putting these females in these positions? It's, it's, uh, it's getting a lot of uh, of me, or, uh, the men harmed, the good men. I second, agree. Second, second thing, I'm just trying to run down some things so you can uh, maybe if you want to look them up. I seen something on 60 Minutes CBS where it was an Afghanistan woman. I guess she's a. Uh, a news person over here, or she's like something where she goes through clips or something like that. I think she did. She was over some like military thing where she was basically like a teacher or something. What's the little, what's the little thing where they see the Senate Marines to that little big camp? Oh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Okay. So long story short, the whole thing is they was going over the bin Laden memoirs or whatnot. And, uh, he was basically saying how he was going to do uh, a, a, a tax on America, and they, it just had me mind boggled. Like, okay, why would y'all be reading this right now when you got all these foreigners coming over here across the border? You don't know who is who. Yeah, so that's it's true. Seen, it, all right, so it's man, I gotta, I gotta end. We are over, over the, t- over time. I have to end on time now. But call me tomorrow, it. man. That'll work. Yep. All right. Sounds good. All right. Take care, <laughs> guys. Uh, Da Bibby 42 report says, Hey, I missed a lot of the show today due to having to run errands. Is there a chance you can play your mid show song again? I will put the timestamp on it so you can click right to it after the uh, on YouTube. Thanks, homie, and happy birthday, Hake. Thank you. Star C on asks a personal question of the white man. I'm not answering that question, but thank you, Star C on. Appreciate the super chat. Very generous. Thanks for the support, everybody. TheHakeReport.com. Don't forget RebuildingTheMan.com slash church for the throwback service 4 p.m. today. Thanks, guys, and take care. Adios.